An aircraft with 68 passengers and four crew members on board crashed in Nepal. The Yeti Airline 9N ANC aircraft crashed about 20 minutes after it took off from Kathmandu for Pokhara, which is barely a few kilometers away from the destination. According to the Civil Aviation Authority of Nepal, 68 people have been reported dead from the Yeti Airlines 9N ANC aircraft. Six children, including three infants, were on board the aircraft. Due to the nature of the damage, at least 20 bodies have been identified so far, and the rest are yet to be ascertained. As uh, there were 72 people on board, rescue authorities are now searching for these in the adjoining river. DNA of the bodies will be sent for identification to a Kathmandu lab. Nepali folk singer Nira Chantel is among the 68 people killed in the plane crash. Soon after the crash was reported, the Kathmandu airport was flooded with relatives of the passengers on board. Nepal Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal also rushed to the airport. He further said that the plane was flying from the capital, Kathmandu, to Pokhara. Local authorities and airline spokespersons say the plane crashed between the old and new Pokhara airports in central Nepal. The wreckage immediately caught fire and rescue workers were rushed to the site. The foreigners included five Indians, four Russians, two South Koreans and one each from Ireland, Australia, Argentina and France. The eyewitnesses' videos show the plane flying dangerously close to the surface and drifting to the left before the fateful accident took place. Nepal's cabinet, meanwhile, has called in an emergency meet in the wake of the crash. Meanwhile, the five-member committee has been formed to probe the incident. Also, Nepal has declared one day national mourning on Monday and declared it as a holiday. Nepal's air industry has boomed in recent years, carrying goods and people between hard-to-reach areas. It has nonetheless been plagued by poor safety due to insufficient training and maintenance. The European Union has already banned all Nepali carriers from its airspace over safety concerns. The crash is Nepal's deadliest since March of 2018, when a U.S. Bangladesh 8 turboprop flight from Dhaka crashed on landing in Kathmandu, killing 51 of the 71 people on board. Now for more on this, our correspondent Saloni Maraka has sent us this report from Pokhara. At least 68 people have died uh, when a domestic aircraft crashed here in Pokhara. This is the aircraft that was carrying 72 people on board, including 68 passengers. We can see the condition of the aircraft. This is completely burnt down and debris have been left. The officials have to take the seat out of the aircraft uh, to retrieve the bodies. And um, this has been considered as one of the worst uh, airline crash in 30 years of uh, history of Nepal. And for further details, we are now being joined by Captain Amit Singh, who is an aviation safety expert. Thank you for being with us. Now, what is the information that you understand from the airline? The government has vowed to probe the accident, but what might have gone wrong? Thank you very much for having me on the show. <clears throat> Prima facie, this looks like a technical issue. If you see the videos just before the crash, the aircraft has stalled, uh, went into a nose high attitude, the left wing is dropped and the aircraft comes down crashing. This is a typical stall, which happens due to a loss of airspeed. Airspeed is directly correlated with the amount of lift the wings generate. So 
something has caused the aircraft to enter into a high nose attitude, thereby uh, the decrease in the lift and the airspeed. So this needs to be investigated once the CVR and the FTR, which is the black box is found, which records all the data and the communication between the pilots, the crew and the aircraft with the air traffic controllers. Uh, the only source of information right now we have is the flight radar data, uh, which is available, which shows inconsistent air airspeed and altitude readouts. But that is there on all the previous flights. So was there a technical fault which was carried on and not uh, rectified? Uh, that needs to be probed. Right now we have seen uh, the scene of the horrendous accident. We understand that uh, a fire broke out immediately, which was put out. Police say that the number of fatalities has gone up to 68. Could anyone have survived this crash, really? It's difficult to survive such a crash, but uh, there have been cases where people have survived. Typically, uh, people seated at the rear because the tail section breaks off. The aircraft is built in parts three or four parts, three sections or four sections. So once uh, the impact happens, the tail uh, basically breaks off and uh, is flung away from the main body where the fire actually takes place. So if at all there is a possibility that people seated in the rear may have a remote chance of survival. Uh, but in the middle and the front where the fuel explosion has happened, uh, the chances would be very remote. Captain, why? Are we seeing these repeated tragedies in Nepali aviation history? Well, Nepal has seen about 27 accidents in the past three decades. Uh, the last two accidents of Tara Air uh, were in uh, the treacherous mountainous areas. But what needs to be seen is why do these accidents continue to happen? So it is the safety culture which is prevailing in the country and within the airlines. So safety culture defines how people behave and act. If they, there is a reporting culture, if there is a maintenance issue, do pilots and engineers report it? Do they insist that the rectification is carried out before the flight or do they carry on with the faults in the interest of uh, revenue? So safety is a balance between production and protection. Too much production or revenue generation will lead to a loss or erode the safety uh, levels. So once production is increased, safety levels also have to be enhanced. The training standards have to be increased because of the terrain around, uh, which requires higher skills than a normal pilot would require. So such eventualities have to happen. Uh, pilots continue to press on Despite poor weather, uh, we've seen in the last year, Tara Air and the one before, uh, the pilots continued through the valley in clouds, whereas they were supposed to have turned back. So uh, these are all issues not uh, prevailing in one airline. It is a generic uh, or the safety culture in the country. That is why the IAKO, the UN body, had last uh, downgraded uh, Nepal to category two, wherein they could not fly to uh, major destinations. Uh, the European Commission had banned all Nepali flights. So these are big issues uh, which need to be uh, covered, especially training of pilots, because why does that accident happen? The last person there is the pilot. Why was the pilot not uh, equipped or trained to handle that situation, which they are uh, supposed to handle in any eventuality? So is there a deficiency in training or the checking of the pilots or the trainers or the overall standards of training? So ultimately, a well-trained pilot is an asset to an airline. And on the other hand, if you let people or if you let standards slip, this is what uh, is the outcome or the consequence. All right, Captain, thank you very much for joining us with your valued insights on this tragic story. Thank you. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.